You can't go. All the plants are gonna die. I'm gonna take a bath. Bad dates. I'll alert the media. Boys, keep off the moors. It's evil. Don't touch it. The name's Pliskin. No war. Hang on. Welcome to Vintage Video, where we're re-watching the 80s so you don't have to. We'll be reviewing every major film release of the 1980s in chronological order, overanalyzing what you've seen and spoiling what you haven't. I'm Patrick O'Reilly. I'm Jesse Bayless. And I'm Richard Wells. And today we're discussing Fantasies, released November 6, 1981. It was written and directed by John Derrick and released by Joseph Brenner Associates, which sounds more like a law firm <laughs> than a distributor. And maybe it was evidence. Maybe that's why. <laughs> Writer-director John Derrick married his first wife, Patty Bears, in 1948, eight years prior to the birth of his fourth wife, Bo Derrick. He left Bears for 19-year-old actress Ursula Andress, later the first canon Bond girl, who he then left for 23-year-old television actress Linda Evans, best known for her later work on Dynasty. In 1973, John Derrick took his third wife, Evans, and a 16-year-old high school dropout named Mary Kathleen Collins to the Greek island of Mykonos to shoot a film entitled Once Upon a Time. Derek convinced his wife to sell nude photographs of herself to fund the film. Completely unpredictably, Derek began an affair with the 16-year-old actress on set, and his wife returned to America to file for divorce. When financing fell apart mid-production, a German lab seized their footage and held onto it for seven years until Fantasy's producer Kevin Castleman bought it back in 1980 for $100,000 on the strength of Ten's performance in theaters. That's that's crazy that they held on to it for seven years. They were like, you didn't pay for this, so you don't get it back. Mm -hmm. But just the fact that the company was still even around. I mean, like... Yeah, I think it was just a, a regular, like, post group that mm -hmm. just, like, did some work on the film, and they were like, we're going to hold on to these film cans until you come and pay for them. And okay. they, they took almost a decade. When you told me, yeah, sixteen year old, I was like, well, yeah, she says she's sixteen, but she's no, not actually she's 16. sixteen. She's sixteen in this film. Yep. And I did not realize that because the year it came out, she was no longer sixteen. Correct. She was a totally reasonable age to be. Nude and we've in a movie. seen her as a naked adult in movies earlier this year, even. But this was legal because it was Greece. Right. Oh my god. Hence the law firm releasing it. No, I don't know <laughs> the story there. Derek and Collins had to stay in Europe until her 18th birthday to avoid charges of statutory rape threatened by Collins' agent, who thought that Derek was ruining her career. After they were married, Mary Kathleen Collins changed her name to Bo Derek. Despite filming in 1973, their film Once Upon a Time, later retitled Once Upon a Love, wouldn't hit theaters until 1981 with the final title, Fantasies. Bo Derek had exploded onto the scene with her performance in 1979's Ten, and this film, though shot first, was able to capitalize on her star power. Did it make money? I assume it did because it couldn't have cost anything. It's like the resort it that they It cost $100,000 at least. Well, yeah. <laughs> but it, 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 in a lot of ways, it's like the resort where there's literally no cost. There's mm. only a reward for it. We open on a sunrise over Greece. Or as my notes say, over the Greece. <laughs> like it's the way people mispronounce the Ukraine. Mm. I guess people stopped doing that finally. Bo Derek as Anastasia wakes up on a boat in the harbor and looks through a porthole at sea. Later, in a small rowboat, she waves good morning to Captain Dimitri. So when I was watching this, uh, she, you know, she like waves like, you know, says hello, you know, and, and he says hello. And I was like, man, this movie's really badly dubbed. Like the audio. I think it is badly yeah, dubbed. Yeah, it is. Well, it turns out I was watching it in Hindi. No, oh. <laughs> but but the first lines were in English. Oh, that's so funny. I didn't notice it. Um, but where then, did you find it in Hindi? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it was one of the audio tracks, huh. and apparently huh. it defaulted to Hindi. That's weird. But again, it started in English, so I thought I was like, "Oh, this is weird. It's really badly dubbed." Um, but then they now started, I don't understand them at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought I was having a stroke. Um, but and I was like, I don't see subtitles. Is this is this like maybe this it's just this conversation that they'll look at. Why back does the scene it? taste like toast? <laughs> um, <laughs> but then I realized, oh wait, hold on. I think I'm, I'm in another language. Um, and the, then I switched it to English. <laughs> still badly dubbed. It's still badly dubbed. <laughs> yeah. I was like, wait, <laughs> what is happening? She paddles to shore and refuses to share with Captain Dimitri the reason for her visit to Athens. 
It's a big secret, Captain Dimitri. Sorry, but it really is a big secret. Dimitri asks where her adopted brother Damir is, and she says he's working. We cut to Damir in a bathtub, splashing his nearby girlfriend with bathwater. The girlfriend must be loaded because by the end of the scene she promises her father will buy him a ship. We'll never see this girl again in the whole film. So he's just flirting with a yeah. lady. Well, I think uh, I think that this is his in to get the ship. Right, yeah, and it I, is. I, she, yeah. she says her father will pay for the whole thing for mm. him. He pulls her fully dressed into the tub with him. Later we see him sneak out of her fancy hotel and walk across town right past a lot of ancient Greek ruins. We cut to Anastasia bathing herself in a very fancy tub, but then we cut to reality where she's just sitting in the same tub in a storefront display and it has no water in it. So I thought this was, okay, I'm like, oh, okay, so this movie is going to have a whole bunch of fantasies that we cut away to, Mm -hmm. like we cut back and forth between reality and the fantasy of what's happening. No. No, this is literally the only time it happens. (laughs) Well, it will happen one other time shortly. It cuts back to this same shot of her in the tub. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, well, no, there'll be another thing I have a note for, but... um, it, it also it's just like her performance is so strange. It's really bad, really, really bad. And and I and I I thought I thought that she was playing someone with a mental disability. I thought that too. It's like aliens just were oh that landed was it. In. It's not just aliens. It specifically feels like Mantis and Drax are having all of these conversations. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the great. perfect. That's the perfect analogy. <laughs> But yeah, she starts trying to like the, the bathtub's so expensive. She's like, was like, well, I have a boat. You can have my boat. It's right, just yeah. like, <laughs> what? <laughs> May I help you? Yes. How much does this tub cost? A lot, a lot, a lot of money. Here, let me help you out. Oh no, thank you. Not just now. It's hard to determine exchange rates as far back as the early '70s when this was shot. But as far as I can tell. 36 drachmas was about a dollar in 1975, which puts this tub in the range of 2,500 1975 bucks, which is the equivalent of over 14,000 today bucks. Yeah, I believe that. For this tub. She tells the woman that she might have enough because she owns a boat as though she planned on selling the boat to replace it with a fancy tub. Are you just going to yeah. float out there in the harbor I in a tub? I would much rather have a tub than a boat. Yeah. But, but also, but other... I don't. But I also don't live on an island. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, but also, like, like how does how does this woman is is this this woman's like plan? I'm going to have a store that sells one really on a, high ticket item, and I will be loaded yeah. for life on a this random is, Greek island. How high demand are there for fourteen thousand dollar tubs? Yeah, yeah, this is like the <laughs> shop in Animal Crossing that only has like four things for sale each yeah. day. <laughs> Demir finds her at the store and refuses to look at the tub. He picks her up and carries her away toward important business. Demir, Demir, stop it! I'm buying this beautiful tub! She bites his ear? She tries to paddle away without him but returns out of guilt when he throws her into the water and then paddles away without her. Later, they're both on their boat, the Aphrodite. Do you guys recall the last time we saw a boat with blood red sails? Hint. Jaws 2? No. Mm. Hint. It was blown up. The island? The island, Mm. that's right. Demir points Aphrodite at a yacht full of tourists taking photos on deck and shoots right by within feet of the craft. The photographer on deck catches sight of Anastasia and snaps a photo. Demir loops back around and Anastasia jumps overboard for some reason. We see her in a black t-shirt in very shallow water, naked from the waist down, and then swimming some more in a white shirt and catching hold of the dinghy being towed behind Aphrodite. So this is where she enters like a parallel universe is this a fantasy or is this just continuity error and they shot a thing in a pool (laughs) yeah like she's she's in three feet of water yeah she's swimming and she goes demir where am i and she's like in this echo chamber it's like you just jumped (laughs) off the boat you idiot what do you mean where am i (laughs) yeah i i I don't know what's happening and and she's hearing all these voices like i will make you rich like talking to her it's like what what's happening is this the fantasy (laughs) and then she turns around and swims back to the boat she just jumped off of unclear the purpose of this dive but demir makes her wait in the dinghy for a while to think about the decision that night anastasia and demir step siblings check into a honeymoon suite for some reason does he think we're married he sure does he's no dummy (laughs) what What? (laughs) you aren't married you are step siblings what do you mean he's no dummy he is a dummy (laughs) so are you Anastasia notices their boat, the Aphrodite, floating out the window and reveals that she, too, is a dummy. Hello, 
Aphrodite. We're up here in the hotel. Bye bye, son. See you tomorrow. Are you fucking three? <laughs> what is happening? I I I. I was, I was I was certain. I have the note. It was like I think she has some sort of mental disability. Yeah. I feel like it's um you know how in the show Muppet Babies they would like reenact adult films but yeah. they're children. Yeah. It feels like that. Wait, Except, they reenacted adult films but, on Muppet Babies? <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. Oh my god. It, it is the adult <laughs> film version when of Muppet When your womb Babies. looks kind of weird cuz it's full of baby froglets. <laughs> That's what they're called, balls. right? Baby froglets. <laughs> <laughs> like co- combination it's of frog and, and frog. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, did you? I I shared you the um, the the fan theory that um, Miss Piggy and, and, and Kermit are the same species. I have not heard that. Oh. Well, because um, you know, if you look at uh, the Muppets Christmas Carol, they have children, and mm. in order to have children, they have, they have to, to be, be the, the same, same species. species. But all of the girls are pigs and all of the boys so are frogs. A species so it's that got presents that way? it's got sexual dimorphism happening within this and 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 that's just how they present them. What if that's just how pigs and frogs are? Yeah, that's and, it. That's and we didn't thing. know. There you go. While they have dinner together that night, we learn that Demir has his sights set on opening a hotel and restaurant like this. Later, she tells Demir that she wants to take a bath and has to beg her stepbrother to leave the bathroom, but he says she has nothing to hide. He agrees to go outside, but we watch her strip for the bath through a peephole, presumably in Demir's POV, from behind a one-way mirror on the wall in the bathroom. Later we see he's not watching her, and we were looking through that mirror for no reason. (laughs) She informs her brother that she has bosoms. Demir asks if she knows anything more about being a woman, and promises to tell her when the time is right, because for some reason he knows all about it. (laughs) Let me mansplain to you how to be a woman. She wants to know if she's a woman, and he says that he'll have to check her bosoms, eventually deciding that they are not worthy of the secrets of womanhood yet. They go to sleep in the same bed. The next day, they paddle on shore again, and the same photographer asks if he can take some pictures. When Demir says Anastasia isn't interested, the photographer pretends that he was talking about pictures of Demir and his magical boat. He's like, oh no, I just want to get pictures of you doing such incredible work around here. Demir leaves for business with the mayor, and the photographer gets what he wanted. Alone time with Anastasia. Anastasia, can you keep a secret? An important secret? Yes. Well, no. Well, yes, but not very good. Demir tells the mayor, a woman in a wheelchair, that he has done it, but we don't hear exactly what yet. He rolls her to a balcony where he is invited to share his accomplishment with a crowded village square below. It is somehow nighttime already. (laughs) What happened? It was 5 a.m. a second ago, and it's it's dark out. It's pitch black. The big ship will come! He tells them that in preparation for the ship, they still have work to do. But we must work hard and fast to be ready for We need so many things. We must make a hotel. And a restaurant. And a bar. And things for the tourist people to buy. And we must paint everything. So wait, you have literally nothing? Yeah. You convince someone to give you a boat to transport tourists here, and now you're going to build hey, all the things hey, to transport this them to? Greece. This is how we do it. You know, you choose the city for the Olympics and that has nothing, and, and then, then you, you build start. it all. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have the land chosen already? <laughs> Why are these people not terrified? Are they all his employees somehow? And and is the uh, the inlet that supports this town deep enough for, for a, cruise a cruise ship, ship to park? <laughs> I spent this entire film thinking he was preparing the, the harbor. Like, are you just gonna like dig it out yeah, so that dredge. you can get the get the boat in here? <laughs> but when he was up there on the on the balcony, he's like, "Is this great?" And this one I was like, "Can you dig it? <laughs> <laughs> the harbor, dig the harbor." Yeah. <laughs> The photographer shouts up that Demir is beautiful and takes his picture. Demir lifts the mayor out of her wheelchair and carries her all the way down to the courtyard to dance in the middle of the crowd. <laughs> it's like, but you're going to have to put her down at some point. Or take her-, her all the way back up the stairs. We cut to Anastasia waking in bed and calling out to Demir but not finding him. She finds her grandfather with a telescope pointed out the window and they watch Demir writing something down while he floats in the dinghy in the middle of the water. I wanted him to hold up the paper and it just says, Dropped oars help. (laughs) (laughs) Anastasia rings a big bell to call all the villagers to the work site. The photographer and his model friend show up while Anastasia and Damir eat breakfast at a local cafe. 
The photographer promises to document the entire transformation of the island as construction is underway, and the mayor fully endorses the plan. Next is just crazy pants. <laughs> Damir calls the local priest over and says, oh, by the way, <laughs> I, I haven't mentioned anything before now, but I'm going to build a huge resort to bring tourists to the island. And by build, I mean repurpose buildings that you have already made, like your house, your churches, and your schools. Father, we need a hotel. And we thought, I mean, the mayor and I thought, that your church buildings, well, your buildings would be the perfect buildings to start with. No, Damir. That's my home. That is the school. Sure. Someday. But first it will be our hotel. Why my school? Because it's big and in the right spot. And it has a toilet in it. <laughs> <laughs> Just what every island hotel needs. One communal toilet <laughs> for all the guests to share. But the, the toilet doesn't work. Right. The priest says, no, they can't just take his whole school away and sell the rooms like a hotel, and the toilet is broken anyway. Damir says that it's up to the people, and they might just eminent domain the entire school <laughs> to a private investor who tricked his girlfriend's dad into buying him a boat. Yep. And turns out, that's what happened. Yep. So this guy, Demir, just went to an island and said, I'm going to build a resort here to make millions of dollars. In fact, I'll just use these buildings that are already here, and I'm sure no one will object. They take a vote, and we hard cut to a sign being added to the school that reads, The Hotel, by will of the people. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Damir, you always were a bad boy. You've done a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> Who wrote this? They all spoke English. The people who wrote this spoke English. There's no excuse for this. All the old ladies of the village get numbers slapped on them to correspond with the buildings that Damir has randomly decided he owns. He promises everyone a screening of the public enemy instead of a paycheck. I was like, but what about public enemy? And he goes, uh... He's like, I guess he, he pretends to... like he's shooting with yeah. his finger. And then he says, oh, Damir is the public enemy. It's like, he certainly yes, he is. is. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> While the people work transforming the town, we see Anastasia has dyed her hair brown. They build the framework for the sails of an enormous windmill, and Damir rides from the top of the frame in a loop until he's upside down at the bottom. Meanwhile, Anastasia is sitting for photos all over town, when I'm sure Damir wants a picture of himself upside down on this windmill instead. We get a photo montage all around the island. Damir interrupts the photo session angry and carries Anastasia away over his shoulder again. We cut to footage from the Roaring Twenties standing in for the promised The Public Enemy screening. We see the priest worshipping at his altar and annoyed by the film's gunshot racket. The mayor is intrigued by the imagery. Is America really like this? Oh yes, but it is in full color now. <laughs> they have color in America now. <laughs> Damir flirts a bit with the photographer's model and the photographer discreetly drags Anastasia away for more photos. Damir catches them and beats up the photographer. Because he touched you way, you're a woman. <laughs> I'm a woman everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Only one part of you is a woman, you chimera. Damir chases him for a while until they agree to a fist fight. The agreed upon parameters say that the fight is over when one or the other fighter falls into the water. Damir throws a lot of punches, but whiffs them all and then falls into the water on his own. Like he steps backward into it on accident. And they all check his feet and they're like, yep, your foot's wet, you lost. <laughs> And you said it would make you happy for us to fight. But now you don't sound very happy. Well, I'm happy. I'm very, very happy. You are not happy, Damir. I'm happy. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck is this? <laughs> the next day, the photographer is leaving and he calls to Anastasia over a megaphone to say goodbye and that she's a beautiful woman no matter what Damir says. Damir brags to Anastasia about the fight he lost last night until he notices she's crying and then she tells him to get the fuck out. You will have to go to another house. Another house? What are you talking about? You can't stay here anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore? You mean I can't even stay in my own house? This is not your house, Damir. What do you mean, not my house? It's the house of the Demetriotis. Not my house. This is my house. It is not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> These are fucking children. <laughs> I don't get it. 
She says she's a woman today because the photographer said so, which means that she can't share a home with her brother anymore. Their grandfather overhears this news and demands to see Anastasia's womanly titties. Well now, my little girl, your grandfather may be old and deaf, but he's not blind. Let's take a look and see. And he yanks her top off and Demir concedes that she is a woman. So right before it, they're having this conversation and the grandfather says, what you say? What did you say? 100% sounds like that Pokemon video. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> What's, his What's his name? What's his name? <laughs> What's his name? Grandpa. <laughs> Dick fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Damir tells the mayor that his sister kicked him out because boobs showed up. The mayor points out that he can move back anytime he wants. He just has to marry his sister. Dummy. Just marry her, you idiot. I mean, this is like, it's like a bootleg Blue Lagoon, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So they're not siblings, but his family is dead, and so they adopted this random child. Yeah. So they can get married. Right. But it's just weird that it's like, well, it would be weird for you guys to live in the same house, but you should live in the same house anyway. And have sex with each other, even though you're siblings and you're both adults. Well, yeah, I, I, I take it it's like the religious rules of I guess. the land. You're not blooded. Well, oh, okay. So there's a question. I have only ever heard the term blooded in terms of like having gone out and killed something mm -hmm. and then smeared its blood on your face. Uh, yeah, I mean, presumably. Like in the I omen. Mean, the, yeah, I was gonna say the omen three. Yeah. We did this yeah. right, um, but. What does it mean in this context? I think it just means blood relations. That you're not blood relations, so you can't live in the same house together. Oh, okay. That makes more sense. Yeah. I thought it was some action that they needed to have happen. You guys need to be blood brothers. <laughs> Go, it's like you everybody either... cut open a butt cheek and press your butts together. <laughs> like you now you're butt brothers. get married, or we have this other ceremony. <laughs> yeah. We have lots of options. Later, Damir asks Anastasia if he's protected her well, and she lies that he has. She begs to cook him dinner tonight, and he allows it. Later, we see Damir riding a motorcycle, and someone, possibly a girl, I can't tell, jumps onto the back with him. No idea who this is, and they only ride for about 10 feet, and then they get off again, and we never see this character again. Who was this person? Just a random town's person. Just wanted a ride for five feet? Damir takes a pickaxe to some rocks on the coast and hurts his hand somehow. He tells whatever he's trying to dig up that he will dig it up later. Because everything in this is a is a living, breathing thing that you can talk to. Well, yeah, he he lays down in something, and I thought it was supposed to be some kind of stone coffin. Yeah. Um, and I was like, is this what he's digging up? I think so, but it doesn't look like it because at first he's in the wrong place if that's what he's digging mm -hmm. up. Later, Anastasia asks him like 20 times in a row what he did today because she cares for some reason, but he never says. One thing he didn't do is anything involving the resort that the entire village is just building for free for him out of buildings that were already here. He's providing literally nothing to the town. He's just saying, I want a resort, and they're like, we'll get right on it, sir. Damir makes fun of Anastasia for still wearing the makeup that the photographer put on her. She says she'll wear the makeup forever. They argue like five-year-olds some more. If you don't wipe your face, you're going to stink. I don't care if I stink. Well, you will. Well, I hope the stink dazes you and you fall and you hit your head. That's mean. I'm leaving. Good. Go sleep. I put your bed on the roof. <laughs> <laughs> this is almost verbatim what the yeah, movie is. I'm, I'm not even exaggerating the way they talk to each other. Where's my bed? On top of the house. Not here. They say a man can't sleep in a woman's house. They don't say a man can't sleep on a woman's house, do they? Damir asks Anastasia if she can do his job of ordering everyone around and not doing anything all day so he can spend more time digging up his secret thing. That night, Damir hops in the tub for a bath and tries to drag Anastasia into the tub with him. She tells him to leave her alone and he throws her over his shoulder again and then into the sea where he tears off her clothes and scrubs the makeup off her face while she cries and then he wanders dripping back into the house. But not really, because the next scene we do see her wet. She still has a full face of makeup. She does, for the whole rest of the movie still. Yeah. Hating me doesn't mean you can't fix us some dinner. If you don't fix me my food, I can't eat. And if I don't eat, I'll die. Then the island won't be fixed. <laughs> fixed? Are you fixing the <laughs> island? Is that what you're doing? It, this, this is... Now, now we're getting into like really bad, like mental abuse. Like right. it's been physical abuse, 
and verbal abuse, but now it's mental. Like Yeah. And when you get to the end of this film, you realize how the filmmakers view this character, that this is just a romantic comedy. Mm-hmm. Then it gives you the idea that this is probably how John Derrick treated Bo Derrick for their entire relationship. In the absence of a meal, he starts drinking all her fancy liquor, and they're back to arguing like five-year-olds. I hate you! I hate you, and I will never talk to you again! Never, never again! Oh, I hate you! This comment hits Demir hard. (laughs) 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 She refuses to join him now because she is naked, and suddenly he spies on her from above. Like, I don't even understand how he got above her. But the moment he does from above, she grabs the, the... piece of fabric that's hanging out the window that she could have had the whole time, on her yeah. the whole time. Mm-hmm. Good night, naked woman. The next day, Damir tows a bunch of wood out to his dig site. He's uncovered a large stone box and tries to attach it to his motorcycle to bring home. And I was just praying that this movie would end with him getting crushed under the box. Yeah, right? <laughs> but what is this thing? It's something that you can... It's a big stone box. Yeah, it's a, something that you can fill with water. Okay, but if you ask me, if it, so this is, but this is an existing thing. He didn't carve right. this. No, nope. he just found it. Like he everything in it. his life, he just finds things right, right, right. and takes them. Okay, so let me ask you: If you go digging in ancient ruins in Greece or wherever, and you find a large stone box, what do you think that stone box is? Mm-hmm. I would assume that it's full of not bones. <laughs> yeah, because like I said, he he lays down in the lid of it, and 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 as as, as if was like trying to get the size it of it. Hundred percent has to be have been like a sarcophagus, a, some think, some yes. sort of coffin, right? Yep. It, but he just sees a box, <laughs> and he's like, "Oh, free box! I bet my motorcycle can tow this." No fucking way, your motorcycle <laughs> can tow this. <laughs> Even when we see his motorcycle towing it, there's ropes and chains that are run alongside the motorcycle that are clearly going to a crane that's moving this giant stone box because this motorcycle's not doing shit. Eventually, Damir tows the box out of the hole. The next day, Anastasia cooks her horny asshole brother dinner while he flashes his dick at her. You're naked! Why is she cooking for this dumb monster of a person still? Villagers continue doing all the work painting buildings Damir stole, while he goes back to work dragging that stone box around for no apparent reason. Anastasia finds him lugging the secret box around, and he starts yelling at her. He somehow hides it, and then drives her away to cook him dinner. That night, they watch a war movie with the mayor beside the church. In the middle of the movie, Damir goes back to the secret box and lights a big fire for some reason. I don't know why. He's heating the water. He's heating the water inside Mm -hmm. this thing that he's carrying away. Okay, that's what's happening. Anastasia gets so drunk at the movie that people have to carry her home. The next morning, the mayor dresses Damir up nice and fancy, presumably for a surprise wedding ceremony to his sister. Like, you just know it immediately what's happening here. An old woman gives some villagers a chicken in a bag, so they throw it into Anastasia's bedroom to wake her up. She wakes up and throws it back out the window. (laughs) As is the custom. Right. (laughs) Set it free if it comes back. It was meant to be dinner. When she walks outside, she follows her own name echoing through the alleys of the town. She comes upon her own wedding ceremony and realizes that her brother has arranged for them to be wed against her will so that he can fuck his sister instead of being homeless on a roof. As she approaches the altar, he says, It's your tub, Anastasia. It's your tub. My tub. He's filled the stone box he dug up with water and he's pretending it's a tub. In the middle of town. <laughs> middle Why of is it hot water? Just so you can put your hands in it and yeah. feel that it's hot water. She's not going to strip down and take a bath right here in the middle of the wedding. Although she might yeah. because this is I don't is know how why that didn't goes. happen. Honestly, <laughs> why didn't that happen, John Derrick? Anastasia is quick to say, I do, and marries her asshole brother. Well, hold on. It, he, he, the priest asks, and she gives like a half nod, and the priest's like, I, I don't feel I'm it. not comfortable accepting that <laughs> as a response. And the mayor's like, did you see it? Did you see it? Do it again, little girl. Marry a brother. <laughs> And he's like, okay, I saw it that time. That's good. You don't have to verbally just nod. Just nod. I know words are hard. (laughs) Suddenly we see a cruise ship in the distance, and the implication is that passengers will be perfectly happy settling for a painted school in place (laughs) of a staffed hotel with literally no toilets. I mean, there is a toilet. It just yeah, it's just gonna get taller and taller the more people use it. It's like dumb and dumber. It's like it's like, come on, you bastard flesh. <laughs> uh, I'm just shaving. You're going to marry me. I love you. 
you. Will you kiss me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you for marrying me. Thank you for loving me. <laughs> this is children on the playground yeah. pretending to get married. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Will you marry me? Oh, thank you. Will you kiss me? I probably won't do the first one right. You'll have to help me. So this is like a never been kissed situation too? Apparently. She's just been living on a boat with her stepbrother for her entire life, waiting for grandfather to fondle her into adulthood. Oh, God. As is the custom. As is the custom. Thumbs down. <laughs> this is this is barely a movie. I, I, it, it was agony. This whole movie was agony from start to finish because I did not understand what was, was happening. It was like, it was like a train wreck that, you know, the thing that you had, you're watching so intently because you're just like, what, what am yeah. I seeing? This what? is horrid. <laughs> and when you start to approach the end and you're like, there's like seven minutes left in this movie. How is the photographer going to come back and rescue her from this guy? How are they going to explain what this guy's been digging up the whole time satisfactorily? And what's going to happen with the resort? There's no way they could possibly answer that in seven minutes. And <laughs> they don't. Yeah. <laughs> the end. The cruise ship comes. Everyone is very displeased and they leave immediately. Yeah. I'm honestly fascinated by this movie because it is it, it is so bizarre. Yeah. That, that somebody thought that this was normal, like a normal speech pattern, normal language that yeah. people would use. And like, I honestly would watch an entire remake of this movie with Mantis and Drax because I think it'd be all right. You know, I, like the, you'd, you'd be like, yeah, this makes sense. I think it, <clears throat> it reminds me of The Room because it's like all these scenes happen where you're like, yeah, those are words, and you could you could mm. use them in that order, but I don't think that makes sense that, the, or that anyone would talk to other people that way. Like, it, it definitely feels like English as a fourth or fifth language for this person that wrote this movie. And it's not. It's John Derrick, who was an actor, who was a famous actor at the time. It's not like he was, like, didn't know how words go. This is why that German company had it for seven years. It was like... We're going to keep it for seven years and you have to pay $100,000. <laughs> Fine, here, take it. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know why they didn't just burn it the day they got it. But, but was hundred was the $100,000 the price that they set in 74 or was that the final price that I they I think decided? that was like the the owed dues okay. over time because with a, a lot of late fees tacked on where they were like, ugh, it's way in the back of the warehouse. Are you really going to make me get it? It's $100,000 for me to go get that. And they were like, here you go. And he's like, all right, that's stupid. All right. Do we know, do we have any idea how much this movie made? Um, More than $100,000. Yeah. And it can't have cost anything. I would say the budget is $100,000. I mean, he he literally had his wife sell nude photos. Like, like, hey, sweetie, start an OnlyFans so I can make a movie about my new girlfriend. And she did. And they they made this movie for nothing. And then it got locked in a safe for a decade. And they had to go buy it back later. When they were like, oh, yeah, we can make a million dollars with this. And they probably did. I don't even know how wide a release it got. This might never have been seen by anyone. Well, if you look at the Wikipedia page, the Wikipedia page doesn't tell you anything about the plot. It's just. I know. The, it, go, it goes plot, but the plot is. I was really hoping for some help. <laughs> the plot is the relationship of uh, Derek and Linda Evans. Yeah. And how he came to marry Bo Derek. That's the plot of the movie fantasies, according to Wikipedia. Yeah. Which is. And that's not what it's about. Maybe. Maybe that's what this movie is it's about. A, it's a very confusing metaphor for that. Yeah. Um, I did appreciate, though, that the IMDb uh, summary in one sentence is like, uh, Bo Derek wants a fancy tub and her brother wants to open a hotel. And it's like, that's beat for beat the whole thing. That's not even like, that's not a vague summary. That's literally everything that happens in the movie. <laughs> that's it. You would think that there would be more character defining to Bo Derek's character than she wants a fancy tub she found one day and can't afford. I do like one of these IMDb comments titled Dumb and Damn Here. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, but yeah, thumbs down for me. Thumbs down. This is a big thumbs down. And then what are we doing uh, letterboxed? Jessica. I have it at 145 out of 156. All right. It is below full moon high, but above strange behavior. <laughs> okay. I, I just, I, I find this movie fascinating as to how That's bad true. it is. It's it's a cultural experiment. Yeah. 
bottom of the list. 156. 156. I I I was just I was pain I was in pain. I was in pain watching this movie because I just did not understand what was going on. And I was looking at what the movies above it, it's Scream. You're like, oh God, Scream's pretty bad too. But it does have that one random scene where that cowboy rides into town. Right. right? Yeah. I was like, that's yeah. something interesting that's that cool. happens. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, and remember the scene in uh, Scream where the protagonist female is is happily marries her her <laughs> oppressor at the end of the film. <laughs> that that makes sense, right? That's that's a good good way to end the story. Yeah, uh, I I had just nothing nothing to say about this movie other than it was weird and maybe mad because yeah. he's he's clearly just. A terrible, terrible person. Yeah, they make him a cartoon villain. Like two thirds of the way through this movie, yeah. he's like, he's he he knows she cares about the makeup, so he he rips all her clothes off and scrubs the makeup off her face, and then says, "Make me dinner." <laughs> and the next morning, she marries him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I feel like that deserves a couple spots up from the bottom. It's just so weird. <laughs> I, I I had to put it at the bottom too. All it's right. right under roar. Um, 156 out of 156. I just, I could not believe it when I saw him in the tuxedo with the mayor the next day. I was like, wow, they're really doing this. And it's not because he cares about her at all. They've made it very clear that he does not care about her. And he's literally only marrying her so that he has a fucking a couch house. to sleep on. <laughs> because the mayor even said like, oh, well, you should marry her and then you can have a house. And the next day he's like, all right, I'm going to go find a, a coffin to scrub for her <laughs> as a wedding gift. <laughs> And, uh, but and that's, why, that's why he needed the fire to heat. You got to boil out all those remains. Yeah. <laughs> a little sanitize <laughs> that right. tub. Got to clean it up. But uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's fantasies. You got yourself a stew going. <laughs> oh, God. Because there's all the bones that were already <laughs> yeah. floating in it. That's perfect. Don't worry. The cast notes will go very quick on this one. The cinematographer, writer, and director were John Derrick. He has acting credits dating back to the early 40s, but his best known role was playing Joshua in The Ten Commandments. We saw Derek direct his wife previously in Tarzan the Ape Man. Derek continued directing his final wife in titles like Bolero and Ghosts Can't Do It. The music here came from Jeff Silverman, nothing else. Peter Hooten played Demir. He was Paul in Orca, Tony in the original Inglorious Bastards, and he played Doctor Strange in the 1978 <laughs> TV movie Doctor Strange. Bo Derek was Anastasia. She was the soon-to-be wife of director cinematographer John Derek, who was 30 years her senior through his death in 1998. She has since remarried actor John Corbett, who is five years her junior. Her first film was Orca with the same guy, and then 10 with Dudley Moore. We've seen her so far in A Change of Seasons and Tarzan the Ape Man. The last 80s film we'll cover from her is that gem we mentioned before, Ghosts Can't Do It, and later she appears in Tommy Boy and Sharknado's 3 and 6. No credits I recognize from anybody else. That's everything for fantasies. If you have any thoughts you'd like to share, you can find our socials at linktree slash vintage video pod. What's that sound? We got one! That's right. It's a new patron, Jeremy Ball. As a $5 patron of the show, Jeremy now has access to 40 full-size 70s reviews and 40 minisodes from 1980 and a hand in choosing next month's film. For July of 1973, our $5 patrons are choosing between the following eight titles. Cahill, U.S. Marshal. Andrew V. McClagland's Western, about a U.S. Marshal, J.D. Cahill, played by John Wayne, bringing his outlaw sons to justice. It stars Wayne, George Kennedy, and Neville Brand. Cleopatra Jones. Jack Starrett's black exploitation film, about a fearless government agent, Cleopatra Jones, portrayed by Tamara Dobson, battling a powerful drug lord, to dismantle his operation and protect her community. It stars Dobson, Bernie Casey, and Shelley Winters. The Daring Dobermans. Byron Chudnow's crime comedy about a group of highly skilled Doberman pinchers trained by criminals to commit daring robberies. It stars Charles Robinson, Tim Considine, and Joan Caulfield. The Last American Hero. Lamont Johnson's sports drama based on the true story of Junior Johnson, played by Jeff Bridges a young stock car racer from a rural background who becomes a racing legend. It stars Bridges, Valerie Perrine, Gary Busey, and Ned Beatty. Lady Ice, Tom Grease's crime film about a professional jewel thief played by Donald Sutherland who falls in love with a beautiful woman while planning a high-stakes heist. It stars Sutherland, Jennifer O'Neill, and Robert Duvall. The Macintosh Man, 
John Huston's spy thriller centered on a British agent played by Paul Newman who infiltrates a criminal organization posing as a convict. It stars Newman, Dominique Sanda, and James Mason. Oklahoma Crude, Stanley Kramer Western about an independent oil driller portrayed by George C. Scott who clashes with powerful oil corporations in pursuit of striking it rich in Oklahoma. It stars Scott, Faye Dunaway, and John Mills, and S Bernard L. Kowalski's horror film about a herpetologist, played by Struther Martin, who transforms his assistant into a deadly snake-human hybrid with science. It stars Martin, Dirk Benedict, and Heather Menzies, each of which celebrate their 50th anniversaries in the month of July. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you'll join us next time when we'll be discussing Time Bandits, which IMDb describes like so. A young boy accidentally joins a band of time-traveling dwarves as they jump from era to era looking for treasure to steal. We leave you now with the trailer for Time Bandits. We're going to get the bends going from this movie to that. <laughs> you, I, you, I think you might literally, what's at the top, Raiders. I was going to say, you know, for Richard, you might literally have put the bottom movie and the, the top movie. <laughs> right next to each other. Yeah. All right. We leave you now with a trailer for Time Bandits. Remember my voice? I do trailers. All kinds of trailers. 23, take two. One day they'll put me in a film, a proper full-length job. Until then, I'm just stuck with this sort of stuff. Go and see this. Don't miss that. The most terrifying thing you ever saw is coming to babysit for you tonight. All right, cut it down. Look, just read what's on the script, will you? What? The script. Other way up. Ah. <clears throat> Ready? Yes, yes. You flock to see brief encounters for the special Close. event. Huh? Close Encounters. Close Encounters, the film. Oh, I never saw it. Well, forget that film. We're on about our film. Time Bandits. The word. Time Bandits, the one you are supposed to be promoting. Remember? <coughs> you flock to see Close Encounters for the special effects. You went to Superman to see a man fly. You went to Star Wars for the droids. You went... Now what? What's page two, man? It's under page one. See? Oh, man. Yeah, you went to Star Wars. Time bandits can offer you much, much more. It's not the special effects or flying men or droids which makes time bandits a unique cinematic... Cinematic! You know, pertaining to the cinema. Mm -hmm. Cinematic experience, it's the makeup. Yes, folks, you've never seen anything like it. Men made up to look like monsters. Monsters made up to look like men. Look alike men made up to look different. Different men made up to look alike. No expense has been paired, spared on the pan stick. The pan stick. No expense has been spared flying in the world's greatest makeup man. Just a minute, just a minute. What about the plot? The what? The plot. What the film is about. Well, I haven't seen it, have I? Haven't seen it? You're sitting there telling millions of people to go and see a film you haven't even seen? Well, I can't see every film I do now, can I? Oh, wonderful. Terrific. Look, give me that. What are you doing? Taking over. You're out. O-U-T. Finished. Kaput. Finito. And what about the trailer? I'll do it. <laughs> Time Bandits is an awfully good film. We have worked ever so hard on it. It's a tremendous adventure story. We like it, and we're pretty sure you will. <laughs> What's wrong with it? It's direct, punchy, honest. Honest. <laughs> honest. Smartest. What's that got to do with anything? <laughs>